Hey guys, this is Claudia here from The Bookkeeping Experts. We're back for more. <laughs> and happy tax day for those of you who filed S Corp. Uh, it's time to start, start thinking about how you're gonna maintain your books up to date. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure that many of you already filed your tax a while ago and are thinking about how do I make sure that everything is working correctly in QuickBooks Online. Um, so yes, and today we're going to talk about one aspect of QuickBooks Online and that is purchase orders. So for those of you who have to purchase inventory uh, for your company, uh, the purchase order will help you manage that. So you're going to issue a purchase order, send it to your uh, vendor and they're going to fulfill that and you're going to turn that purchase order into a bill. So we're going to go and work work with that today. So without much further ado, let's go straight to QuickBooks Online. All right, here we are. How do I get to purchase order, Claudia? Let me get out of here. Uh, see the plus new here? Yes. So one thing for you to remember on the plus new, it's going to be pretty much um, transaction uh, transactions and uh, so pretty much everything is in here sales receipt inventory any time of transaction entry right it's going to be here and so it's going to be purchase order so we're going to go ahead and click on purchase order here and this is to send a purchase order to your vendor so we're going to go ahead and select the vendor uh let's say Okay, there you go. Uh, this is a sample account, the the one you're very familiar with. So we're gonna order some raw materials here. Um, and I'm gonna make sure that the date here is correct. And I'm gonna send this to my vendor, requesting them to fulfill this purchase order. Okay, so we're gonna save and close. Now keep in mind, that this is what we're doing today is not available available on all subscription it's only available on plus and advanced so you may not see those things in simple start or essential okay good good to know all right okay so now is the next step so we we entered the purchase order right and the next step is to turn that purchase order into a um a bill okay so there's different ways for you to get there one way is to go into customer expense i'm sorry not customer vendors so expense vendor and you're going to select the vendor that uh, we just had so i'm going to duplicate this page here and i'm going to go back on that transaction that i just did Oh, by the way, this kind of clock here is very useful in pretty much every single transaction. If you want to bring the latest one, you can click here and that's how you are going to open it. So it's Norton Lumber. So we're going to go to vendors. We're going to look for Norton Lumber. And we should see a purchase order right here. Okay, I can send it. Or I can I can copy to a bill. Let's suppose that it was already sent, accepted. Now the next type and the next step is to copy to a bill. All right. So this will turn that purchase order into a bill. So that means this has been fulfilled. So your vendor has provided you the confirmed the items that you requested, send it to you, and now it is a bill, right? Okay, so if you copy to a bill, this is what you're going to get. You want to make sure that the bill date is for before the payment actually happened, the, the, your payment to your vendor, okay? And you, you want to verify that everything is okay. If it needs adjustments, such as, you know, you need to add like shipping costs and things like that, you can just click over here and add it. Oh, 
Okay, this is a simple account. So where's the livery here? Where is the livery? We don't have it. So we're going to have to create it. So we're going to create new. And it's it's it creates a product here. We're going to do a, we can do a service. And we can call shipping expense. And we're going to create a, an expense here. And this is not service. It's going to be shipping. Okay. It's an expense account. And we're going to find shipping, shipping, shipping. Oh, we're going to have to create a new shipping here. This is simple. Oh, my word. It's missing pretty much everything. Okay, so we're creating an expense account. So the good thing is that you can go through the entire thing, right? The entire process in case if you need. So shipping and freight. So I'm creating a new chart of accounts right from my bill. Okay, so I purchased this from a vendor. And save and close. So I can shipping expense. I'm adding here. Let's suppose that it cost me fifty dollars. Shipping is very expensive nowadays. So <laughs> that could there you are. There you have it. Fifty dollars of shipping expense. Now my bill is no longer two hundred and five, it's two hundred and fifty-five. Okay, you can schedule a payment through QuickBooks so you can save and close, and maybe your client is sending a an ACH or something. If the client sends an ACH, you want to make sure, um, I'm sorry, this one is your payment. <laughs> if you pay your client with an ACH, you want to make sure, or a check or whatever, uh, Zelle or whatever, PayPal, you want to make sure you mark that bill as paid and match it in banking. Now, if you pay it through QuickBooks, it, it will automatically generate a... Um, a an ex bill payment for you so in this case we are going to pretend that no we're not doing through through uh melio which is the company that processed the bill payment if you want to take a look at my video on that subject to pay your vendors with melio you can take a look um but right now we're just going to go ahead and click on the plus new we're going to record the the we're gonna pay the bill, right? So we're gonna have we're gonna have a few bills here, but we're gonna select that Norton Lumber. Uh, okay, so this is not the bill. This is the uh, this is the p purchase order. So make sure you select the bill right here, okay? Because that's two hundred fifty five includes the shipping cost, okay? And the ones that has the exclamation point is just a purchase order. You wanna make sure you turn into a bill before you make the payment. Okay, and so we're gonna select the payment. Make sure the payment date is for prior to the day when you when it hit the bank, All right? And you can go ahead and save and close. We schedule uh, or we record it here that we pay the bill. Okay, we already paid whatever way. We send a check, whatever it goes. So when that bill actually clears the bank, so you recorded, you you started with a purchase order, you turned the purchase order into a bill payment, you added expense, additional expense un, uh, into that bill, and you recorded that you pay for that bill. Now, when you recorded that you pay for the bill, you want to make sure you record it to the right account. So. If you want to check the my pay um, my bill payment, you can you can click over here and remember that counter clock. You can click on the counter clock. It's gonna bring my last transaction and all the details to this right and the the payment is right here. So if you click on the blue on the right hand side, it's gonna open up that payment for this bill. So you can click on the blue on the on the date right over here. It's gonna bring that bill payment, and it's gonna tell you what kind of 
uh, what kind of account that I used to pay for the bill. So it marked as MasterCard, but if it is incorrect, you can change that. Let's suppose that you pay with your checking account. So you can select checking and then save and close. Okay, one thing that is important, when you enter a bill and you mark that bill payment, you wanna make sure that when you go into banking, Okay, so the right, uh, left-hand side menu, you click on banking, you're gonna categorize. You wanna make sure you find that bill and you wanna make sure that you record, you match it, you just, you can just add it. Cause you, if you add the transaction, then you're duplicating that bill. So let's suppose that there was shipping expense, but you didn't add that to the bill. In the bank, it clear as two two fifty five, but your bill payment is for two hundred five dollars. So we would have a discrepancy, and you wouldn't be able to match it here. I mean, you could, but you'd have to click on the transaction and find a match. Okay, this one already found found a match and is the correct one. So everything looks good. If you have doubt that this is maybe this is not the bill you you recorded. You can click on the bill, it's gonna open up the transaction, and then you can confirm, okay, yeah, this is the right one, okay. All right, and you're gonna match. Of course, this is not the one that we just made, because this is a sample account, so it's not gonna, it's not gonna have it here. So but we, we're gonna go ahead and match it. Um, so everything you do in QuickBooks, either for income transaction, you're entering your invoice, your payments, in your deposits, right? So you can match it in QuickBooks. Remember, there's a workflow. And the funny thing is that I recorded a video not too long ago um, about the income transaction workflow with, with QuickBooks Online. And uh, I did say, do not, do not record your income transaction into your bank. Send it to undeposited funds and then record the deposit. For a lot of people, this is, uh, this is like out of this world and why do I have to complicate it? Why do I? <laughs> but actually, once you start getting used to the whole workflow, it's not complicated and it will make sense to you because that's a way for you to guarantee that you that every single transaction in QuickBooks Online, especially income, is accounted for. Because you don't want to, you know, I had clients that we found that payments were, uh, were not received uh, it was recorded as paid, but there was some kind of problem with the payment processing and they never got it. Um, they never actually got the, the payment. So when I inquire, listen, I have a, those transactions sitting on undeposited, undeposited funds. And we try to look for this, uh, this transaction, this income into your bank account. We couldn't find it. What happened? And sure enough, that income never hit the account. So they were able to correct it and collect. <laughs> so how important it is, <laughs> you're marking as paid. As the income is coming, especially as you're growing, you wanna make sure that everything works out right. So there is the importance. Of course, if you record, if it's only one transaction, and you recorded it straight into the bank account and you match it, it's going to be okay. However, there is that possibility if you make that little mistake, one cent, two cents, whatever, and you don't match it, you just add it as a income or expense again, you're duplicating that transaction. So if you already recorded that transaction, you don't want to add it, you wanna make sure you match it. See, either the deposit or when you have an expense, such as a check or a bill payment, okay? Bill payment right here, see that? A uh, few things for you to look for is the date of the transaction. Look at the date of the transaction. Look at the date of the payment. You can click on the amount and open up. Click on the payment. This is actually gonna open up that payment like I show you. Then you can verify that everything is correct and then you can match it, okay? All right, <laughs> this is it for today. So purchase order. Uh, turn into a, a bill, a bill, bill payment, or I'm um, sorry, turn into a bill, and then bill payment, and then match it in banking. So that's the whole process of an uh, expense account. But 
keep in mind, this is just for um, transactions that you actually have to send a purchase order for, to, to purchase uh, inventory from your clients. All right, so let's go back here. Here I am. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> okay. All right. I hope you like this video and I hope it was useful to you. That's why I do them. That's why I spend the time because I want to help you understand your QuickBooks Online, understand how, how everything works so you can keep your books up to date and be able to have a point of reference. So remember, um, setting goals is very important, but if you don't know where you are, if you don't know your point of reference, you really have no way to, to uh, set your target to the right place. You need to know where you are and you need to open your eyes and look at where you are. And that means you need to have your books up to date, your finances up to date, so you can go into your finances and have reliable information. So once you have reliable information, it can go into reports. And one of the most important one is to go into your profit and loss, make sure everything is accounted for, go into your balance sheet, make sure that everything is recorded correctly. Uh, and the balance sheet the balance sheet is a perfect place for you to find discrepancy where bills might have been miscategorized or something like that. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. So hopefully this was useful to you. Uh, let me know if you have any questions right down below. Right down below if you have any questions. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and share with your friends and co-workers and with the world. <laughs> we would like... We would love to continue uh, coming up with new uh, updated information and we want to share with you. So subscribe to our channel so you can be the first one to know what's going on with QuickBooks Online and how to work it, how to fix problems, how to, um, how to get caught up and things like that. <laughs> All right. So thanks a lot for watching and spending this time with me. I'll be back next week with more information on QuickBooks Online. And until next time, keep on smiling.